Hey, it's Mr. Allen here with another math lesson for you today, so let's dive right in. Okay, so yesterday you learned from Mrs. Greaser how to use fraction strips, and we're going to dive a little bit more into using fractions, uh, but this time we're going to look more into how they fit into a number line. Uh, to begin, though, let's go ahead and start counting a little bit by fractions. We're going to start with halves, so we have zero halves, one half, two halves, or a whole. So let's count those. Zero halves, one half, two halves, or a whole. One more time. Zero halves, one half, two halves, or a whole. Time we're going to count by sixth. So let's count. We start with zero sixth, one sixth, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, five sixth, six sixth, and six sixth equals one whole. Let's count again. Zero six, one sixth, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, five sixth, six sixth, or a whole. Last time, zero sixth, one sixth, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, five sixth, six sixth, or a whole. The last one we're going to do today is by twelfths. You have zero twelfths, one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths, six twelfths, seven twelfths, eight twelfths, nine twelfths, ten twelfths, eleven twelfths, and twelve twelfths, or a whole. Let's count with those together. Zero twelfths, one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths, six twelfths, seven twelfths, eight twelfths, nine twelfths, ten twelfths, eleven twelfths, and twelve twelfths, or a whole. Last time, all together. Zero twelfths, one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths, six twelfths, seven twelfths, eight twelfths, nine twelfths, ten twelfths, eleven twelfths, or twelve twelfths, which is a whole. So today we're going to focus on fractions that can be found between zero and one. We've taken our number line that you would see in our classrooms and we've blown it up so that the big portion is between the zero and one instead of between one and a hundred. So we're just looking at those numbers that are between zero and one. And you might look at this one and say, Mr. Allen, there's no numbers there. Well, that's because the first strip that we have says that it's a whole. And when we count by whole numbers, we're counting by those regular numbers of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. But we know by looking at like a ruler that there is sections uh, between 0 and 1 as well. <clears throat> so let's look at those. The first one we have is halves. Now, I like to think of fractions in food. So let's think of a pizza. If I cut a pizza in half, then I know that I have two equal parts. Fractions, the bottom number represents the number of cuts that you made along the number line. It is also called the divisor. The top number tells me how many of those we have, and that's called the numerator. I'll explain more later. But let's dive into the halves. If it's half, I said that I cut it into two equal parts. So I find about in the middle. I now have two halves. So I could come over here. And I know my first part here at zero mark is going to be zero halves or zero over two. If this is 0 over 2, my next mark would then be 1 over 2, which is 1 half. And then my last one would be 2 of 2, or 1 whole, so it equals 1 as well. 
So we have a half right here. We have a whole. We have zero. To find fourths, I make that halfway mark again. And then I go over and I do half of those. So now I have four equal sections. And since I cut it into fourths, my divisor needs to be four. And that's going to be the same all the way across. So I know that's going to be the same here, here, oop, here, and here. So we're dealing with fourths here. And now we just go in order. Zero fourths, one fourth, two fourths, and three fourths, four fourths. <clears throat> we see here that two two halves is equal to four fourths. We see that one half is equal to two fourths. And we also see that one fourth is smaller than one half. Three fourths is bigger than one half. Let's try eighths. Eighths, we're going to draw our fourths like we have. And because eight is double of four, that means I have to cut these sections in half as well. So there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. And now we're dealing with eighths across the board. You want to try to get them as close to being equal as possible on spacing. And then once again, you go back in and you start <clears throat> putting in your numerators by just counting up one each time. Three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and eight eighths. So there we have halves, fourths, and eighths. And we see that two eighths is equal to one fourth, four eighths is equal to two fourths, or one half. 6 eighths is equal to 3 fourths, and 8 eighths is equal to 4 fourths, or 2 halves. <clears throat> Thirds is a little bit more difficult. We have to look at cutting this into 3 equal parts, so we cannot do the half because 2 is not... When looking at thirds, it's a little different because we're seeing that if we go in the half way now let's move on to thirds thirds is a little different because we're doing three equal sections instead of halves <clears throat> so we're going to have to come about here and about here those are thirds three equal spots so we know we have to come down here and do thirds. So the three is our divisor. And then we add our numerators in here. This would be one third if that was zero thirds, two thirds, and three thirds. Now the only one that's going to be equal to the rest of these is our zero thirds and our three thirds, which is still one whole. You might be seeing a pattern. Any number over itself is equal to one, one whole. <clears throat> For six, I know that three times two is six. So each of these sections, if I go through and I cut them in half to make two equal sections for each one of those, will give me six. So I draw my thirds, 
I go back through and I put my halfway marks for those. And I have six now. And then we go ahead and count our, our numerators in here. One sixth, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, five sixth, and six sixth. We see that two sixths is equal to one third, four sixths is equal to two thirds, six sixths is equal to three thirds, or a whole. And we also see that 3 sixths is equal to 4 eighths, 2 fourths, or 1 half. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at our home link today. Okay, so let's look at our home link today. We see that it says write the fraction that represents the distance the triangle has moved. Well, we see that the number line is divided up into two equal sections. And it has only moved one of those sections, so we know the answer is one half. It moved one of those two sections. Here we have eight equal sections. The triangle has moved one, two, three of those eight sections. So we say the triangle has moved three eighths. Three eighths of the line. It says that we need to write the missing fractions. Well, we see that there is three equal sections. We know the next section that is missing after zero thirds. If counting up, we know that it's going to be one third, followed by two thirds, and then three thirds, which is also a whole. Here we have four equal sections. One, two, three, four. We already have two fourths and three fourths. So we know the next one has to be four fourths. And then I could count backwards to fill in the ones over here. Four fourths, three fourths, two fourths. The next one would have to be one fourth. and zero fourths. Now as third graders, sometimes we get a little excited and, oh no, I don't know what to do when we see those blanks ahead of time, but just do the one you know, and then work backwards, and it makes it a lot easier. This next section, we have to fill in the blank. So it says 30, or 333 plus 492 equals what? And it wants us to show our work, show our work. So let's do that over here. I like to go up and down. It makes it a lot easier for me. So three, 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 333 plus four, nine, two, 492. I go to add them together. 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 plus 9 is 12. I put my 2, but I have to carry my 10 into the 10 place. <clears throat> 4 plus 3 plus 1 is 8. So my answer has to be 825. Good. Let's move on to the next one. This one is 888. Once again, I like to go up and down. That way I could keep myself organized. It just helps me better that way. 888, and I'm subtracting this time. 
So minus 678. Remember with subtraction, we have to look for bottom bigger borrow. And in this case, I do not have any that I have to borrow in. So I go eight minus eight is zero. The difference between seven and eight is one. And the difference between six and eight is two. So my answer here is 210 equals 888 minus 678. And that's all for today's lesson. I challenge you to make your own fraction number line. And as always, remember, you are smart, you are kind, you are important, and you are love. Have a fabulous day, Falcons.